Welcome to you and happy Sabbath. Um, it's great to be here with our study hour this morning. Uh, we're going out uh, live from Croydon Seventh-day Adventist Church today, the 20th of April, 2024, at approximately 10 o'clock. Well, what can I say? It's great to be back with you. It's been a year, I believe, since I last hosted. And what a year that's been. I, I can only thank you for your prayers and for your love. And, and praise be to Almighty God for his comfort and deliverance. Uh, I can only just keep on praising him because he's been there every step of the way. And I really want to again thank you all for your love and your prayers. Well, we continue to focus on the great controversy, the war that started in heaven and continues on earth. The core of these lessons have been prepared uh, by none other than Mark Finley. Uh, and just to remind you that this is a live interactive Bible study. And we want to hear from you. We want to hear your questions. We want to hear what's on your mind, your thoughts. Um, and please don't be, feel challenged. Um, uh, there is no wrong answer. Um, uh, we, we're here to engage. We're here to discuss and, and welcome everyone's contribution. We extend a special welcome to those who may be joining us for a first time. Uh, if you haven't already done so, uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Uh, and you can make a contribution by writing in the chat on uh, Vimo or YouTube, also on TikTok. Um, if you don't have a study guide, you can access via our online address, which will appear on the screen, www.sabbath.school. And again, a special shout out to our radio uh, listeners on Adventist Radio London. And if you are on Adventist Radio in London, you can uh, just uh, text us on 82228. Uh, leave a space and type the word hope. Type the word hope. And I must warn you that that is a chargeable service. So you can also email on studio at adventistradio.london. Now, as you know, we can't do this on our own. We have a co-presenter here um, hosting with me this morning, this morning, warming, I could, <laughs> but uh, this morning, uh, Marcia Lewis is here with us. Um, welcome, Marcia. How are you doing? Good morning, David. I am doing fine. And welcome back into the hot seat. It's good to see you there, mate. Thank you. Um, and also joining us uh, as a panel member is our own elder, Pete. Pierce, no stranger to this platform and medium of evangelism. How are you, Pete? I'm good. It's good to see you and welcome to all those who are online. Great stuff. And uh, also, we want to welcome uh, Sister Diane Rowland, who is always blessed and highly favored. Always a joy to welcome you on behalf of our family, your family here at Croydon. Hey, good morning, everyone. Nice to see you all, all the way from Mexico. I'm so glad that I can join you one more time in Sabbath school lesson and to study the Word of God. So happy Sabbath, everyone. Great. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. We know that it's in the early hours of the morning, so I know it's a, a special uh, sort of sacrifice. So we really are grateful for your contribution this morning. Um, so before we begin, let's just uh, ask our co-host, Marcia, if you'd just like to pray for us, please. Sure. Let's pray. Almighty God, maker of heaven and earth, but also our Abba, our Father. Lord, we are so grateful for this Sabbath day and the opportunity to, to go over the lesson, a powerful lesson, Lord, an interesting lesson. A lesson that sets the scene, Lord, of what is happening in, in the world today. Father, I pray that all who are logged in online, Lord, that each person will receive a blessing. Wrap your loving arms around each one of us, Lord. And Father, help us that in terms of this lesson, there will be themes that are coming out that we can feast upon for the coming week. Thank you for your continued blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Marcia. Now, last week, we looked up at the concept of a central issue, uh, which is love or selfishness. Now, 
sometimes selfishness can be paraded as love. We know that Satan and his followers do this very well until light shines on the motive. Light shines into their darkness and the deceit is seen for what it is. Now, this week we're going to um, examine what exactly constitutes light and what is darkness. Uh, starting with Genesis, the first thing that God revealed or introduced was light. And in John uh, chapter 1, in the first few verses, it tells us the same Genesis story, but presents Christ as the source of that light of creation. And funny enough, light is the reason for life. Light in its different forms or wavelengths and frequencies is the reason why everything exists today. The, the quantum physicist will tell you that light holds matter together as a basic component of the nucleus of the atom. And nothing that exists can exist without light. Thus, upholding the claim of Genesis that light is the power behind creation. And that light is the Messiah, Yeshua, a.k.a. Jesus Christ. Now, um, I wonder if I can go to you, Jackie, just to um, have a quick look at the memory verse. Um, John 12, verse 35, I probably um, put you on the spot here. But in fact, let me just take this opportunity to also introduce you, Jackie. And uh, you're always here, faithful. And um, I just really, again, want to say happy Sabbath to you and drop you right in the deep end, because I know you weren't expecting this. Can you just share with us uh, John 12, 35? Uh, and um, uh, we will, we'll take it from there. Good morning, Elder Billet. Good morning, everyone. And the memory verse uh, says, Then Jesus said to them, A little while longer, the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. Thank you so much. Very, very well read, <laughs> eloquently and um, presented uh, in, in a, a way that I'm sure makes it plain and easy to understand. But it's wonderful to see how Jesus, and this is, you know, every time I, I look at texts like this, which is usually highlighted in red in the Bible, um, I realize this is a direct instruction from Jesus Christ. He said, in a little while, um, it's only a little while that he'll be with us. Walk while you have light. Walk while we can still engage with Christ, but while we still have our Bibles, while we still can go to church. Lest darkness come upon you, for he that walketh in darkness really doesn't know where he's going. So, um, Marty, if I can come back to you. According to the introduction of this week's lesson, what is darkness relative to Christian history? And, and how was darkness introduced? Okay, thank you, David. Um, in terms of the introduction of the lesson, Mark Finley, the author of this quarter, makes reference to the book of Revelation and describes Satan's mission to destroy God's children and the manner and tactics employed to achieve this goal. He has been and continues to be a persecutor of the church throughout the ages, using lies, deception, and error to cause turmoil and destruction. History shows us that God's people have suffered under the enemy, and this suffering has been documented in the history books of people being burnt at the stake, fed to lions for being, for, for being committed to God, and other heinous actions taken against people who choose to be faithful to God. The enemy has done and continues to do everything in his power to establish and maintain compromise in God's church, seeking to draw people from the light that only can be found in Jesus Christ, to this darkness representing sin and evil, being as bold to manipulate God's word, taking truth and mixing with error. The Oxford Language Online Dictionary gives a def definition of darkness as the absence of light. This darkness was introduced into this world than none other than Satan. He started with our first parents and he has rolled through the years to this present day and will continue to do so until the second coming of Christ. If there is any doubt of the presence of darkness, we only have to look at the turmoil that has occurred and continues to occur in mm. this world. Wow. 
you really sort of looked into that one. Thank you so much, Marcia, for um, engaging uh, us in that uh, very clear explanation. And I just really want to put that question out to you, um, our viewers and listeners. How do you explain darkness in the world today? How is this manifested? What is light to you? So there's a couple of questions in there. Um, so uh, we're expecting a variety of responses. So how do you explain darkness in the world today? How is it manifested? And what is light to you? Now, you don't have to give an answer to all of those. Maybe just pick one area that you want to focus on and uh, let us hear your thoughts uh, and ideas on that. So um, we're going on to the next section of the lesson, and it's uh, alerting us by the title to something um, very, uh, very subtle and sinister that's going on. Satan's subtle strategy. And we want to get right to the heart of the matter. So I'm going to call in you, Diane. And I want you to share with us um, John 14, verse 6. How does Jesus describe himself relative to God? Okay, uh, I'm going to read um, in the NIV version, John 14, 6. It is a really uh, well-known verse that it says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except to me. It's interesting how Jesus describes himself. And sometimes we just disregard this verse, just saying it like nothing is coming out. But actually Jesus is describing his whole life, his whole purpose in three words. Way, talking about his sacrifice, um, uh, the the death of of, of his uh, how he died on the cross, the resurrection. That's the way uh, uh, when we talk about talking about Jesus, how we can reach to him. Mm-hmm. When he says that he is the truth, is because he is the author of the truth. Mm-hmm. He, in him, we always have this. Um, knowledge that if we want to know the truth, he is the author of this truth. Mm. And the life, because through faith, we can uh, we believe that the second coming is going to give us eternal life like he has promised. Mm. The most interesting part is the last one. No one comes to the Father except through me. Mm. That's interesting because nowadays human beings are used to uh, well, they're trying to to know God in their own means. Yeah, we want to know God through nature. We want to know God through our our own understanding, through the science, through the knowledge of every other person. But Jesus was really clear: no one comes to the Father except through me. So if you want to know really in deep, uh, in profound, you want to know God, you have to go through Jesus. You have mm-hmm. to go and, 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 and talk to Jesus and understand Jesus. And that's a problem with human beings right now. We don't have, we don't want that compromise with Jesus. Yeah. And um, we use other tools. Yeah tools, going to church, mm. and keep it the Sabbath, mm-hmm. uh, communion, mm-hmm. or any other kind of worship. Yeah. We use them as a tools, but we believe that's enough to get to know God. Mm. And it is not. Jesus yeah. was really clear. You want to know God? Mm. I am the only way. Mm. You want to know the truth that is yeah. God? Yeah. I am yeah, the yeah, truth. Yeah. You want to have love? You you know, I have to, you have to go through me. And yeah. let me just finish this by reading one quote from uh, Ellen White. It says, it is our privilege to listen to the voice of Christ Mm. speaking to us Mm. as we walk the journey of life. Mm. And his words are always words of wisdom. Mm. Mm. We cannot always readily detect the working of Satan. Mm. We don't know where he lays his traps. Mm. But Jesus understands the mm. subtle art 
of the enemy. Mm. And he can keep our feet in safe paths mm. because he is the way, mm. he is the truth, and he is the life. Yeah. Thank you so much. That, uh, that was, again, very comprehensive. So Christ is the only way in which we can get to God. He is the gateway. Um, and we cannot afford to put our trust in anyone else. We've seen some very high-profile um, uh, evangelists, without calling a name, find themselves in hot water. And many of the people who used to listen to them are now upset and disgusted that um, such people who are of such high profile, who they put their trust in, could have fallen. Um, and we shouldn't be surprised. Um, man will always let us down, but not Jesus Christ. Again, thank you so much, Diane, for that explanation. Um, Elder Pete, can you just read uh, John eight forty four and just um, tell me what's going on here? I'm reading from the King James Version. Mm -hmm. John eight forty four says, "Ye are your fathers; ye are of your fathers the devil, and the lust of your fathers ye will not; ye will He's do." Sorry, he was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Mm. I, I totally concur with what Diana said earlier. Jesus, in contrast to Satan, Jesus is the source of light. Mm. He's the source of truth. Mm. Outside of Jesus, there is no truth. Jesus is the truth, the original article. When you compare Jesus to Satan, Satan is the author of lies mm. and darkness. Mm. So, as Diane said earlier, and as John 14 and verse 16 illustrate, Jesus is the way, mm. the truth, mm. and the life. And we have salvation according to, I believe, Acts 4 and verse 12 or 5 verse 12 where it says there is no other way in which we can mm. have salvation mm. except through Jesus. Yeah. Now Satan his role is to deceive, to mm. sow seeds of lies and deception, mm. to have us fall away from the path that leads us back to God. Mm. Satan cannot do anything else mm. but lie and yeah. deceive. Mm. Whereas Christ mm. his natural default setting is truth. Mm. Is love, is holiness. Yeah. Thank you so much. So, so we, we have two contrasting um, views here. Uh, we have um, Jesus Christ, who represents light and truth, and everything that Christ says is truth. Um, uh, and, and that is what we call the testimony of Jesus Christ, truth. And we have to be very careful Sometimes when we read the word of God and Jesus makes a st statement, our comments on a particular social issue, for example, in reference to salvation, and we claim that it doesn't apply to me or us today. We have to be very careful. On the other, on the other side, Satan must lie in order to conceal um, his true motives. However, he mixes lies with truth in order to deceive. I just really want to um, go back, come back to you, um, Diane, uh, and read uh, for me um, Proverbs 23, 23. What are we told here? Uh, sure, Brother David. Uh, it says Proverbs 23, 23, again, NIV version, buy the truth and do not sell it wisdom, instruction, and insight as well. Um, I was hearing uh, Pete's comment, and uh, actually I was thinking in another verse, Romans 12, 2 says, always look to transform yourself by renewing your mind, mm -hmm. because that way you are going to test an and approve God's uh, good, pleasing, and a perfect will. Mm. So if we are not willing to 
increase our knowledge if we are not willing um, intentionally mm. looking to understand God, to have a relationship with God every day, every instant of our lives, yeah. we become, as Daniel 12 says, mm -hmm. uh, none of the wicked will understand, mm. but those who are wise will understand. Mm. So the verse in Proverbs is saying, look to have instruction, to have understanding, That's to it. have wisdom, mm -hmm. to have um, all of that, and don't disregard it, don't sell it, don't say, okay, that's enough. I had enough of, of trying to understand, but because I don't understand, I don't want to continue studying. Exactly, yeah. It is not that way. No. If we no. really want to commit our life to God, and if we really want to understand, mm. it's like, you know, when you are going to school. Yeah. Okay, high school is enough. Mm. Really, sometimes we need to have a, a bachelor's degree, a PhD, mm -hmm. a master's degree in order for us to really grasp a little bit yeah. of all the knowledge that there is in that uh, area of study. Yeah. So it is the same thing with God. Mm. Unless we continue our study intentionally. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, <laughs> we're not going to have a complete understanding and then... Even without saying it, we mm. are selling that understanding. We are just disregarding the opportunity because this is a huge opportunity. It's not that we have to pay some mm -hmm. uh, fee mm. to go to school. Mm. It's not that we are going to have to a uh, bank uh, having some money yeah. lent to us to no. It's just free. We have a Bible, and now we have Bible in our in our in our devices so Absolutely. it's really at hand yeah. so it there is no excuse okay. even for people who mm. cannot read yeah. or, or or people who cannot hear there are so many sure. ways that you can achieve the mm. goal of knowing jesus yes but the problem is that we have no intention to do it no. and sadly mm. the problem yeah. is that we have a lot of people inside church yes with that, with that, with that mind. Okay. We don't want to know anymore. All right. Thank you so much, Diane. That, that that's really unpacked that very well. So the 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 the, the focus is is to is to invest. It's really a, a wonderful um, communication to us, to, telling us to invest. Buy truth. Do not sell it. Invest in wes wisdom. Do not sell it. Always count it as an asset and never give it away. Um, we're going to go straight now to our very dear sister Saul, um, I believe, or Elder Saul. She's um, uh, on uh, the line, and uh, she has uh, something to uh, engage us with. Yes, sir. Good morning. Happy Sabbath to you. <laughs> and happy Sabbath to you and to all. Hmm. Now we're dealing with darkness. I would like to deal with darkness. God is love. With love, there is light. There is joy, there is peace. There is no condemnation. With love, there is helpfulness, cheer. Love, love wants to see you do right. Love wants to see you do good. Love wants to see you grow in Christ Jesus and get to love God supremely as we should. What light does? Does light dispels darkness? What is darkness? Darkness is to do with evil and sin. Mm -hmm. Sin was somewhere. The darkness was somewhere. But love did not have any, any plans with darkness. Love did not want to associate with darkness. And darkness forms its way to get into the mind and heart of someone, to create jealousy and controversy. Yeah. And so, where something is good, the person with darkness will see it as being bad and wrong. Right. And will try to entice others on their side to 
come a strong army to defy good, mm -hmm. joy, love, and light. Right. That they can be supreme. Absolutely. Well, we know that is what happened yes. with Lucifer. Right. But for us, mm -hmm. we have everything before us. Mm. Christ gave his life for us. Right. We, by his grace, yeah. ask him okay. to help us to want him more. Mm. And we can only get to want him more by studying his word, Absolutely. get to know of him, get to love him. Absolutely. Thank you so and much. And when we do that, he says to us, mm -hmm. be peaceful. That's right. Be That's right. We cannot come to the place unless by his grace we practice that which he has given to us mm -hmm. out of him. Yep. So that our characters in him That's right. will become the characters of righteousness. Absolutely. Absolutely. By which we should be covered, mm -hmm. or else no man will be saved. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mr. No Saul. Thank you. That's All we so... have to do, ask him, anoint us with his grace, draw us closer to him, mm -hmm. and his grace will strengthen our faith in him and make us stronger. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we're, gonna, we're going to um, cut to the... In fact, what we'll do, Elder P, if we can just very quickly look at John 17, um, just that we have continuity, uh, 17 and uh, John 8, 32. And um, if we can just just unpick that in a, just a, in, a, in a very quick and concise way, because the time is, as always. Um, so, so I'm reading as usual from the King James Version. Mm. John 17 and verse 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And John 8 and verse 32 says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, John is very clear. Well, what's the definition for truth? Truth, the generic definition is anything that is in accordance with a fact or with fact or reality. Mm -hmm. So that's the generic application of the word truth in the world today. But in the context in which John was speaking, John was speaking in the context that this truth is facts taught mm -hmm. in the Christian religion that's concerning right. God mm -hmm. and the execution of his purpose through Christ. Mm -hmm. The revelation had been given by Jesus. Right. He, therefore, is the truth. Mm -hmm. Now, what does the truth do for us? When we accept the truth who is Jesus Christ, the truth will transform our lives. It will cause a radical change, a 180 degree mm. change in our life. Mm. It will make the, the sinner hate sin. The, mm. the, the robber steals no more. Mm. The, the, the murderer, the liar lies no more or kills no more. Mm. Truth, truth will radically transform your life mm. and make you into the likeness of Christ. Absolutely. Amen. And I, and, I, and I love that. Truth will change your life and make you into the likeness of Christ. And, you know, uh, John 8, 32 says that the truth will set you free. And any time religion gets in the way sometimes, where people get the idea that religion is there to, to, to squeeze you and to control you, and, and um, this is what happened with the early church, and it's sometimes something which still pops up now and again. But let us always remember... It is the truth that sets people free. Marcia, um, what's happening online? Uh, the, the question is, how do you explain darkness in, in the world today? How is it manifested? What is light to you? Uh, how are our viewers responding? Oh, our, our viewers have responded. Um, I've got like 23 responses. So um, take your marks, get set, go. So on Instagram, Christian Vibes says, light is the expected hope that brings peace and joy to those who long for it. Howard says, darkness is confusion, anarchy, not knowing where you are going, what you're doing. We truly need a guide. Praise the Lord for his words, the Bible, which guides us and a moral standard to live by. Dr. Clark says, darkness is sin and light is knowing Jesus Christ. However, it seems as if there is more darkness than light mm -hmm. in the world today. 
Lily says, darkness is everything done under the influence of the devil mm -hmm. and the consequences of sin entering the world. Estelle says, when you, when you are walking with God, you are walking in the light because God is light and there's no darkness in him. Anthony says, darkness contrasted to light relates to states or conditions. Mm. Spiritually, this translates to God with us mm. or God not with us, darkness. God reaches us to view the avenue of his word mm. and commands. Right. Wow. Lestan says, darkness is the wrongdoing this of the world and acknowledges our wrongdoing and come mm. on to repentance then we cannot have the light in us. So through Jesus, we have light in us. And Howard says, the entrance of thy word gives light. Jesus is the light that shines in the world in us. Mm -hmm. Not knowing and experiencing Jesus, we are walking in the darkness. Wow. Peter Burton says, light makes one see what exists. Darkness tries to negate light mm -hmm. and hides what is real and true. God has always been light. So actions that try to suppress God are deeds of darkness. And he quotes Philippians 4, verse 8. I like that one. Yeah. Bless says, when Christ is removed from the heart, one is plunged in darkness. And the three angels group ministries, mm -hmm. their contribution is, darkness is a situation where the victim's eyes cannot clearly discern spiritual matters, mm -hmm. i.e. they luck they lack understanding of what is right or wrong during their walk in the physical life. Moses says, light to me is knowing one day Jesus will take away pain and suffering in this world soon. Wow. And Deborah says, the huge problem is since that, the lie, since that lie of innate godliness in any human being, mm. people want to meet Jesus, Yahweh, on equal footing as a self-proclaimed God or mm. goddess, but that is not going to work at all. Yeah, not at all. And Marie says, Jesus, the light is a source of truth, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Mm. Darkness is manifested, at, sorry, let me start again. Darkness is manifested as the opposition mm. to truth, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and life in Jesus oh. Christ. Okay. Okay. Um, Rodney says you can have a room full of light yet the room still appears dark mm. because pure light can't be seen unless it is reflected off from something mm. Janice says to me um, dark, darkness it pains you can't see anything mm -hmm. you're lost you don't know where you are you keep looking for the light when you see the light that pain is gone and Erlene says, darkness is when people do not admit that mm. God exists. Mm. Everyone was very anxious to see the eclipse. Mm. Isn't that enough to let us know that he is the light of the world? Absolutely. Mm. And David, I'll, there's more, but I'll end it there. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I tell you, we've got some uh, um, Bible scholars there, some very powerful um, statements. Um, and... Um, uh, it's really good to, to see you participating in this way. And, and the fact is that so many of us do appreciate and understand what darkness is. Um, and it's important for us to understand that because we can only see that because we are using the light of God's word to reveal that. Um, Jackie, here in the studio, you you've, uh, have got something to guide us and direct us with. Yeah, I... I the scripture, John 17, 17, sanctify them with thy truth. Thy word is truth. Mm. Um, it is a very powerful, very powerful. And the one that Diane quoted earlier about trans being renewed by transforming your mind. Mm. And sadly, darkness often presents itself, as you said earlier on, David, by winding its way into truth. Mm. And truth mixed with error is still error. Mm. And based on that, sadly, truth, <laughs> valuable truths, life-saving truths are rejected because error mm. has slid in 
to what it is, whether it be tradition, whether it be culture, whether it be any of these things, they slide in and overtake what is the pure truth and therefore that valuable truth is lost Lost. and rejected. And it made me think of that Mm. and it takes me back to that scripture. Mm. Sanctify them with thy truth. truth, thy word is truth truth. and we already know from john that christ was the living word and nobody goes to the father unless they come to christ and and it's just it ties it all together there Mm. the word is so crucial absolutely so thank you very you know christ was is and always was um light Um, And that throws us into the next question, which I really want to put out to our viewers and listeners um, in two parts. A, given that we have access to truth, can we see ways that the enemy is trying to distort truth today in the real world? So whilst we can sort of metaphorically apply light and darkness, um, what what are some of the real ways that we are actually seeing? Uh, in the world today, and B, I'd like someone to give us a, a definitive um, answer to this question. What is apostasy? What is apostasy? Um, now, um, we um, have a, a, a quick word from uh, Sister Sword who'd like to comment on, on this subject. Oh, oh yes. yes. In light of what my sister Jackie was saying, is the sanctify them, sanctify them through thy truth, for thy word is true. It was not only for the disciple, but it was for us as well. All of God's children, we died to save. Mm-hmm. What he wants is that we must come back into the holiness of God, of which he made his first children, Adam and Eve. They were holy. Even the clay from which they were formed, there was no sin anywhere. They were holy. And so, although it sounds very hard for us, we cannot do it. But if we are willing, Christ is not going to adhere to your petitions. If he knows within you, there is not a willingness for you, but you're praying anyway. God is not going to do that. What I He does not force anyone to accept him. He does not force. Persons must accept him from their own free will, and then you will get all the help from him that you require. We can't be, look, I can't pretend with anyone, but I cannot pretend with God. God sees into us the sincerity of heart and mind. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So it's the only way for us to Stupid. come to the place of the holiness of God. God, absolutely. Word, praying to Him, treating yeah. others kindly as right. we should, That's be right. obedient to Him, yeah. and all these things. Believe in His word yeah. and accept it. Absolutely. And what we live in. Believe in His word and accept it. And I love the passion that you bring, Sister Saul, because we're talking about. I've known you since I've been five years old. And uh, I know that you've seen a lot. And the passion that you bring uh, it tells me that this is a message of urgency, uh, that we need to uh, apply ourselves to the light that we have. Thank you so much um, for allowing the Holy Spirit to use this morning. We're going into another section of a lesson. It's called Savage Wolves. Savage Wolves. You know, God's Word is all about helping us to make decisions in regards to securing our salvation. Um, the Word of God as light reveals what is happening in the dark. However, the sinister activities in the dark are expressed by those um, that Paul calls ravenous wolves. I don't know if you've ever seen what wolves do to their intended victims. They work in packs. They attack from several directions. Um, uh, they, they, they sort of network together. They all know what each other's doing. Um, they're menacing. They they cause distractions before they kill. They have one objective, and that is to devour you. Um, And so it's important to understand what uh, what, uh, uh, Paul is is saying here. And I want to, Diane, if you could just share with us um, Acts 20, 
27 to 32, what did Paul give the church in Ephesus? Or, or well, tell us in, uh, in Eph- uh, the church in Ephesus about these wolves. So if, if you, we're, we are running out of time, so if you could just make that as, uh, as concise as you can. Yeah, uh, yeah, David, I'm going to resume just reading two verses, uh, 28 and 29. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you over the years. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he brought with his own blood. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. The problem, uh, the, the, the issue that Paul is talking here is that the wolves are inside our church. It's <laughs> the leaders. That's a problem. Yes. It's the leaders among us. Jackie was saying the problem here is that in, in, embedded in the truth, there is error. And, the, and some leaders of the church, you were saying, David, at the beginning of the study, there are so many renounced leaders, preachers that we know, that they are just mixing up the truth with lies. And the problem is that because they are leaders, they are leading everyone out of the church, everyone and many of the followers who doesn't study, who doesn't pray, they're going after the people instead of going after God. Mm-hmm. So that's the problem. The wolves are inside the walls of the church are inside of the flock of the church. Mm. Maybe leaders, maybe uh, some other church member who are harmful, who are mm-hmm. treat, mistreating people inside of the church. Mm-hmm. So we have to look at ourselves, not say, oh, they are the wolf. No, what about myself? Mm. Am I being a wolf yeah. inside my own church? Am I misleading everyone? Am I teaching uh, wrong teaching mm. the truth? Am I mixing it with my traditions, as Jackie was saying? Mm-hmm. Am I teaching and, and, and trying everyone to follow me instead mm. of follow Jesus? Mm. So I think the main issue here is to look at ourselves and think about that question. Am I being a wolf or am I being the follower of a wolf mm. instead of follower of Christ? Mm. That, and, and Diane, you, you've really hit the nail on the head there, um, because when we look at history, it always has been, unfortunately, the church uh, which has employed the forces of the, of the civil authorities to actually uh, execute harm and hurt members. Um, Christ, for example, crucified by the Romans, but at the direction of the church. Now, we're not... Well, yes, we're pointing inwardly, but it's important for us to be aware um, that sometimes uh, Satan is too smart to make things obvious. It's subtle, it's from within, um, and it's important that we, we come together and that we continually pray for each other because it's so easy to get it wrong. Elder Pete, Second Thessalonians 2, 7, 12 to 17, a lot of text, a lot to unpack, but I'm asking you just to sort of keep it Keep it tight. Yes, I'll try. Um, so I'll, I'll read just 12, verses 12 and 15 mm. for, 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 for time. And verse 12 says, according to Second Thessalonians 2, mm. that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And verse 15 says, therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the tradition which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Mm. Now, Paul at this time, he started to see, he saw things coming into the church that weren't biblical or, or coming from God. And he <clears throat> started, he made the point of trying to denounce these practices, you know. He saw certain idols being brought into the church. As we look into the fourth and the fifth century, we saw even more of these, you know, pagan bits being brought into the church, mm. compromise. Mm. Now, let me hasten to say that the church, by compromising, has never won the world. Mm. The world will always win that battle. Yeah. The only way we can win people for Christ is by standing firm on the word of God. Mm. Now, when Paul says in verse 15, Therefore, brethren, stand fast, 
we must be uncompromising in our stand for truth. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the light, Jesus is the way, and Jesus is the truth. Mm -hmm. When we start to compromise, we become laughing stock of the world. And nobody wants to join us. As a matter of fact, people want to see people who will stand for what they believe. Yeah. Not people who are blown by every wind that comes there. So I encourage us then, you know, take on what Paul says. Stand fast mm -hmm. and hold the tradition which he have been taught. Yes. Tradition of creation. Mm -hmm. Marriage. Yes. The Sabbath observance. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the divinity of Christ. Yeah. The Holy Spirit. Stand fast mm -hmm. because Jesus is coming soon. Absolutely. And just to add to what you've been saying there in terms of those, those pillars that you identified, whether it be you know, marriage, the Sabbath, and, and other areas, those are the ones which are being attacked by the enemy. Um, in terms of compromise, we've seen the church get up and actually lead the way in, in, in compromise. Lead the way. And the world has followed. Uh, it's really been amazing. Um, but um, um, let's just move on very quickly. Um, uh, Marcia, what, what, what are our uh, online viewers saying? Given um, I, I put two sort of questions out there. Um, given that we have access to truth, uh, can we see ways that the enemy is trying to distort truth today in the real world? And what is apostasy? Yes, David, we've got um, quite a few comments coming through. Michael says, if it doesn't line up, Talking about truth, if it doesn't line up with the word of God, it is a lie. People may say, God told me this, but if it doesn't line up with his word, it's just a lie. Dr. Clark says, the devil is trying every day to distort God's truth. For example, when I read God's words, the devil will try to tell me God's words are a lie. Mm. Andre says, compromise is an avenue that the enemy is using to deceive many. Apostasy is attacking one own belief system. Mm -hmm. Deborah adds, the person down with him, Satan, in the pits of hell, desperation, abomination of desolation, because it is the battle of, it is the battle of and for the human mind and soul between Christ and mm -hmm. Satan. Marie says, truth is the soap in the hands of the Holy Spirit mm. to sanctify us, set us apart for holiness, mm. sealing us unto the day of redemption. Yeah. Anthony says, apostasy is rejection of the guiding light of God. It is intrinsically a mind state which is followed by denial of reality. Mm. Deborah says, the person down with him, Satan, in the pits of hell, this, oops, I think I've read that one already, mm. sorry. Let me just... Maxine says, apostasy is leaving the truth, not accepting it. Mm. And Deborah says, fanatic accusations are the teeth marks oh, of a wolf. Okay. Three mm. Angels Gospel Ministry. Apostasy, apostasy is deviating from the original biblical truth mm. of God. Mm. And Rodney says, beware of the savage, savage wolves, brethren but also be mindful of the dumb dogs mm. that won't bark when mm. danger comes. Mm. And he quotes Isaiah 56, verse 10. Mm. Maxine says, there are a lot of wolves in God's church. Yeah. Mm. Erling says, what we are seeing today is too much compromise in our church. Yep. And that is what the enemy is using okay. in letting us think that nothing is mm. wrong in doing some of the things that mm. the world is doing. Mm. And Paul says, Apostasy is going against the revealed will of God as expressed in the Bible. Sadly, many professed Christians today have rejected certain passages of scripture mm. as it does not fit in with modern culture. Yeah, 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 yeah. Martin, what can I say? These, these messages are very profound and very true. And um, throughout my lifetime of being in the church, I've heard this over and over again, but I've seen so many different divisions, people clash, here and there. So I want to put this question out there. We must warn the world. That's a given. Is there a possibility that we can become judgmental by just focusing on what Satan is doing? Uh, look over there. Satan is doing this. Satan is doing that. So I've, I've seen some groups that are focusing on the apostasy of the church, as they put it. Um, 
and making some very unkind comments and accusations sometimes. Um, and uh, and uh, as I'm sure you know, Elder P, as elders, we're on the, you know, at the, at the, at the face of things. We're real people with real issues, real concerns, and you can't always zero in on the wrong. You have to zero in on the light. What are your thoughts? How do we, how do we balance this? Yeah. So just um, let me know how you feel there. Um, so let's go, uh, moving on very quickly, to safeguarded, safeguarded by the word. Uh, and I love the title because it says safeguarded by the word. It's not set telling us that we've got to safeguard the word. We are safeguarded by the world. Um, so, uh, Diane, John 17, uh, 15 to 17, this text presents a, a, a personal solution. Um, what, what's, what's Jesus asking us here? Yeah? Um, or what's Jesus asking God for? I love this part of the Bible of the Bible and actually of the of the Sabbath school hmm. because it says uh, reading again uh, and I mean my prayer Jesus is the one who's talking my prayer is not that you take them out of the world but that you protect them from the evil one hmm. they are not from the world even as I am not of it purify them Cons uh, conserve them by the truth your word is truth. We're talking that the lies of Satan has spread so much, even inside the church, that we sometimes don't distinguish one thing from the other. And Jesus foreseen this, and that's why, first of all, he was praying for us. I love that part. When I on this, when in my in my uh, mind can, became clear that Jesus prayed for me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. And the second part is that He provide the way out. Mm. Because sometimes we think, okay, how am I going to distinguish yeah. the lies of the evil? Mm. How am I going to face these things? Mm. Okay, here's the good news. You don't have to. Because that was Jesus' prayer. And He said, uh, you don't have to fight the, 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 the evil in your own strength or mm -hmm. with your own knowledge. Yeah. Because God himself, the Father himself, mm. is your mighty helper. That's right. Hallelujah. Yeah. He is the one through the Holy Spirit that's yeah. going to teach us. Yes. Jesus said the Holy Spirit is going to stay with you to teach you, mm -hmm. to remind you all my teachings. So the Holy Spirit... The, the Father through the Holy Spirit is the one who's going to help us to understand this. Mm. But again, I'm going to repeat myself intentionally. Right. We have to look for God. That's right. We have to expand our knowledge of mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the Holy Spirit is going to have is not going to have tools no. to work in us. Exactly, and I love that. The Holy, we, the Holy Spirit needs something to work with. Uh, thank you so much uh, for that, Diane. Um, uh, Elder Pete, looking at Acts 20, uh, 32, uh, what does having an inheritance with the sanctified look like in the 21st century? Uh, I'll do my best to answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll read um, from the King James Version, and it says, mm. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the words of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Mm. Interesting expression, and I agree mm. again with what Diane has just said. Now, there, there, there are a few things I want to pick out from this package, uh, passage, and I want to do it as quickly as possible. One, um, I believe it was Paul who was speaking who said, I'm, I'm, I'm commending you. In other words, if we are going to have the inheritance of, uh, of the sanctified, mm. we must first be in and trust ourselves to mm. God. Mm. So that's point one. Two, the Bible says, unto the word of his grace. Now, the word logos, mm. grace mean, uh, um, grace is cherished in the Greek, mm. but apparently the word grace is linked with power, mm. dunamis. So the word will give you power, mm. the same word that held this world, has put this world into existence. Mm 
once we entrust ourselves Amen. to God, yes. we are connecting with that power. Amen. Amen. All right? Amen. Yeah. Which is able to build you up. Mm. In other words, to, to bring out the character of Christ mm -hmm. in you. Mm. So to your question, Elder Billet, mm. what is the inheritance among the sanctified, mm. uh, uh, which are sanctified, sorry. I believe it is experiencing the salvation brought by the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. In reflecting the character of Christ. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is the inheritance which um, of, 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 of the sanctified, which are sanctified, sorry. Mm -hmm. But also, I think, looking back in the Hebrew context as well, mm. an inheritance was an apportionment of land. Yeah. And similarly, at the end of the day, we will inherit this earth. Absolutely. Made new. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I'm just uh, overwhelmed. That was just such a, such a powerful response uh, to, to, to that question and explanation. Thank you, Elder P. Um, but um, one of the texts which I think puts us in the right place, when I look at um, uh, 1 Peter 3, verse 15, um, and it says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you the reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So we, when we look at this, and I just really want to drive this point home, this hope has to be in you. Uh, when Paul and Silas met the man on the steps of the temple, and he, they said, I don't, we don't have silver and gold, mm. but what we have, we will give you. We have to have something to give. Mm -hmm. First Peter 3.15 instructs us to sanctify the Lord in our hearts, set aside God, allow him to have a special place in our minds, in our spirit. For what purpose? So that you can give a watertight answer to anyone who asks you for the reason of your faith. No emotional metaphors, no waffle, no abstract ideas. Um, without emotional upset, just truth, plain and simple. And this is what we have to understand. When we look at the life of Christ, that's exactly what he did. When he was asked about who to pay taxes to, he says, look, give me a coin. Who's head on it? Then give him his taxes. Give unto man what is his and unto God what is his. Simple answer. Never got engaged in any big problems and, and quarrels and fusses and fighters that we can have internally. I believe, Sister Saw, um, you would like to have an input here. Yes, sir. You said some things there. There is so much. I was reading about them in, 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 um, in my devotional book. I was reading about them, but I can't say them there. I would have liked to join you somewhere else. But not now. Anyway, there is something. I hope persons will not feel annoyed, all those who will hear it. Now we are speaking about persons that their mind must be fixed with God. And they must believe and they must accept who he is. Now when people are baptized, I feel that is a day for heaven, heaven's host, and people enjoy there is a prayer which I always feel something in the prayers always feel it should not be there. What this being said is that um, now you see that the devil is going to be after you and these kind of things. I feel those things should not be until it is God's time. What you should say is God saying that now you have tried by God's grace to make a new change of life, there will be problems. Sometimes very hard. Now what we have to do is to ask Jesus to help us. And let the person who study with you get them to pray with you and help. But don't ever say to them that, you know, this one is going to be after them. And he hears. And he finds a way. But God says he wants his people to be sanctified. That's right. You sanctified through Christ. Amen. Through his grace, mm -hmm. through his precious word, we read it and we are able to understand by his love. Mm -hmm. And so we must stop saying some of the things we say mm -hmm. and stop doing some of the things we do. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Doing it. 
<laughs> Stop it. Because the point is that you're giving a message for Christ. That's right. Which one can gain sight. That's right. Uh, Everything must be, tr we must try to do things right. Absolutely. In other words, Sister Soul, take self out of it. That's take it. self out of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to move forward very quickly as, as time is against us. Um, um, Marcia, what are, what are, any, any sort of response from our, our, our uh, congregation or our viewers and listeners? Oh, yes, plenty. Mm. Donna says, speaking truth in love helps one not being judgmental. Mm. Early in, um, Donna says, sometimes they can even leave God's path because the attraction to the sinful flesh is stronger. Also, bringing drums, rock music with Christian lyrics, etc. into the church is a way of compromising. Jennifer says, in order to gain the majority, our message is watered down to accommodate the now crowd because we do not want to hurt the feelings of others. God only deals with quality Many called, few chosen. Vereen says, sometimes we do, looking at what everyone is doing instead of keeping our eyes on Christ. Mm -hmm. Sharon says, what we need to do is to rebuke in love. That is the difference. We all have sinned mm -hmm. and come short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Nigel says, to my mind, the best way to expose Satan, the counterfeit God, mm -hmm. is to present the truth of the real God. Mm. If you study and present the truth thoroughly, the counterfeit will be seen clearly. Mm -hmm. Andre says we must always speak truth to power, but do so with love and let God do the judging. We must never compromise biblical principles. Mm. Anthony says we balance by the principle of contrast, identifying similarities and differences and focusing on functionalities. Fitness for purpose is the heart of quality control. Light is right, good quality. Mm. Kaku quotes Ephesians 5, 11 and says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, mm. but rather reproof them. Mm. Maxine says, study the word of God because by studying the scripture, our spiritual strength is increased. We grow in grace and in the knowledge of the truth. And Peter says, negative press often gives positive recognition. To highlight truth, we must speak more positively and regularly about it than time spent on highlighting wrongs. That tips the balance in truth's favour. Mm -hmm. And Rodney says, truth, if not handled correctly, mm. can have an adverse effect. Mm. And boy, the computer's yeah, it done its own thing. <laughs> okay. Oh, let me, let me finish off Rodney's point. Sure. Truth, if not handled correctly, can have an adverse effect. Okay. Just ask the Jews. They had all the truth. Mm. apologize we seem to having some technical difficulties here but um, um, yeah well um
So the mind itself can adapt, it can move around. Um, and this wasn't what, what uh, uh, scientists always thought. They thought once the brain had been damaged or anything like that, then there was a problem uh, and uh, nothing could happen. But we now know that you can become anything that you set your mind to become. Um, in fact, you can become something that God doesn't want you to become. Um, Diane, in 2 Corinthians 4, uh, 3 to 6, it presents the circumstances of, of our conflict. Uh, can you give us a, a brief synopsis, given that we only have a few minutes left, and we're having all sorts of challenges here um, uh, 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 on this text? Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah the re I, I hope you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. We Don't can hear you. Me. Okay, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, the resume is this. The more we insist in not having a relationship with God, mm -hmm. not craving for his knowledge, his presence in our life, the more Satan has tools mm. to blind our mind, to mm. blind our eyes, to turn us into unbelievers. Mm. And that is awful. Mm -hmm. We rather to commit with YouTube and family and work and et cetera, et cetera, than commit ourselves to our relationship mm. with God, to a close relationship with our creator, mm. our savior, and son to be redeemer. Mm -hmm. So that's the resume of that verse unless we insist, again, intentionally look for the knowledge and relationship with God, mm. yeah, Satan, Satan is going to have enough tools to blind our minds. Mm. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, Elder Pete, um, looking at John 1, verses 4 uh, and 5, and also, I think it's verse 9, how is Jesus described here? Uh, can you share um, uh, this with us as you would share it with the man in the street? Well, I'll try. <laughs> I'll try. Uh, well, it reads, In him was life, King James Version, mm -hmm. and the light was the light of man. Mm -hmm. And the light shineth in darkness, mm -hmm. and the darkness comprehended not. Verse 9 says, That was the true light, which lighteth every man mm -hmm. that cometh into the world. It is interesting that the light that is here spoken of by Christ, uh, spoken of, sorry, it's not by Christ here, is what we, in the Greek, we call zo, which mm. is the principle shared by mm. all living creature. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't just mean this physical life that we experience now. It is speaking about the spiritual life and ultimately the eternal life. That's right. Now, life is a, a light is a symbol of divine presence. Mm. It was God's first act of creation. Mm -hmm. God said, let there be light, and there was light, right? Light, the, this light is the divine presence, or the divine love manifested, sorry, in the incarnated uh, word, which is Christ. Now, what this light does, it actually removes or, 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 or casts out the moral darkness of sin. Um, ignorance concerning the love and mercy of God and the hopeless prospect of death. So when we accept this light who is Christ in our life, mm. he, it frees us from the guilt, from mm. the condemnation of sin yeah. and, and gives us hope in the fact that Jesus will one day cast, take care of all of this trouble that we are experiencing in this world mm. Mm -hmm. and that we'll ultimately live with him forevermore. Mm. So in a nutshell, if we accept the light who is Christ, mm -hmm. the world, we have hope of eternal life, free from sin, forevermore. Fantastic. If we accept that light, we have hope of eternal life. We're going to be winding down now, and I just want um, uh, us to sort of prepare our sort of final comments. Uh, again, my apologies for the challenges that we've had from a technical perspective. Um, but I want us to really begin to focus on who we are. My experience, I've been, when I meet people, and uh, remember the, in First Peter it says that people will ask you questions um, about who you are, about what you believe, because of the way you, you, you deport yourself, the way in which you present yourself. People will begin to ask questions, and people are asking questions now. People are looking for light, and we need to 
ask ourselves a question. Are we in this church believers? And this might seem harsh, but are we church-going atheists? In other words, we go to church, but when it comes to believing in the real power of God, there is something lacking. And I'm reminded of what um, uh, Isaiah uh, said to Hezekiah. What have they seen in your house? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who are the wolves? Have we forgotten our mission? Do we have a mission? Can we tell the difference between light and darkness? So these are the questions which we need to answer clearly in our hearts. And um, I just would like to, you know, again, thank you all for uh, your commitment. And um, I would just like our host just to give us uh, a final comment on, on, on what they've taken away from this very powerful lesson this week. Um, Diane, are you there? Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say this verse is one of my favorites, which is Romans 12, 2. And I'm going to paraphrase, uh, wrapping up all that we have studied. Intentionally renew your mind every day in the truth of Jesus mm -hmm. so you can find the way to taste and test God's good pleasing perfect will and life eternal is assured for we will have a close intimate relationship with God Almighty Amen, thank you so much very well summed up um, uh, before I come to you Pete, um, Marcia if I can just take maybe one uh, possibly two um, responses uh, in, and uh, with your conclusion Okay, Rodney says, truth reveals the dangers of Satan. Truth is a person named Jesus. Mm. Truth is the word of God. Okay, amen. And, um, oh, let me see. Hey. Truth is progressive. Thus present, present truth is what the flock needs now. Mm -hmm. I've seen the dangers of the messengers of God running off from the importance of present truth to dwell upon things okay. don't unite. And right. my comment is, darkness is the absence of light. Okay. Walk in the light that can be found only in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much. Walk in the light. Elder Pete. Any light that doesn't originate with Christ mm. is false. Mm. Jesus is the only light yeah. there is. Amen. Amen. Well, listeners and viewers, thank you so much. And our, 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 um, those of us joining in us in the uh, studio today, Diane, Elder Pete, um, Jackie, uh, uh, Sister um, Elder Saul, thank you so much um, for your contributions. Um, and uh, again, our apologies for the technical hiccups we've had. We know who's behind that. Um, but again, uh, God has been gracious and allowed us to uh, really get the main point of this lesson over. We thank you all. Again, join us again next week where we'll be looking at standing for truth. Standing for truth. Have a good deep dive into this subject. And we'll be discussing uh, the wonderful truths uh, that the Holy Spirit reveals to us next week. Again, thank you and have a happy Sabbath. God bless. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your goodness and for your grace. We ask you, Lord, to continue to be with us throughout this Sabbath day and allow what we've been learning to really sink in as we draw closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen.